The following is a special presentation from the WTNS Sports Department. It's now time for high school basketball here on the Sports Voice of East Central Ohio, WTNS. Stick around, the pregame show coming up here on Facebook Live. Facebook Live is a production of WTNS Radio and Claxon Communications. Let Domino's cook dinner for you. All day, every day, get a large three-topping pizza and now our handmade pan pizza with three toppings, two layers of cheese on a crispy golden crust for only $7.99. Carry out only. Don't miss out on this great limited time offer. Call us in Coshocton at 622-9345 or in Newcomerstown at 498-4131. Hi, this is Jeff Drennan from the Jeff Drennan Dealerships, and it's time to talk about the power of three. What is the power of three? It's three dealerships. Three times the selection, three times the service, and three times the people, and always the best deal. The power of three gives you nine all-American made brands from GM, Chrysler, and Ford. Simply put, the power of three means you are covered. Look no further than the Jeff Drennan Dealerships and the power of three for your next vehicle purchase. Visit us today at jeffdrennan.com. High School Basketball on Facebook Live is a production of WTNS Radio and Claxon Communications. Coach's Corner is brought to you by the Inslee Insurance Agency. For auto, home, business, and life insurance, call 740-622-1111. That's the Inslee Insurance Agency, 433 Walnut Street, Coshocton. The Inslee Agency is proud to be a part of this high school sports broadcast. We support the student athletes on the team and the students in all extracurricular activities. Hi, I'm Todd Inslee. In fact, your good student may qualify for discounted auto insurance rates. We can provide you with homeowner's insurance and life insurance from Auto Owners Insurance. Insure both of us and save even more. For a no obligation quote on auto, homeowners, or life insurance from Auto Owners Insurance, call the Inslee Agency at 622-1111. My guest on Coach's Corner is Head Coach Troy Dolick from the Ridgewood Generals. Coach, first congratulations on the win over Harrison Central before we look to tonight's game. But you had to be pleased with the way your team played three great games at home. Thank you, Casey. Yes, uh, very pleased with how our boys uh, responded to Harrison Central on Friday night. Uh, Followed the game plan. Um, obviously, our focus was on the, the Mitchell boy, and I thought our boys did a phenomenal job of uh, following the game plan and defending him. And this obviously no easy task. Kid averages 32 points per game, so I thought they did an extremely nice job uh, advancing from the sectional game against Harrison Central into the districts this week. Fort Fry is a, a good opponent, obviously the top seed. What can you tell us about the cadets? Uh, very good opponent, very good opponent. They, they've had a very tough schedule. They're battle tested, have a lot of seniors uh, in their rotation, obviously in their starting lineup as well. We're going to have our hands full. they got four or five kids that can uh, shoot it from the perimeter. Not, not real big. Uh, we're hoping that's something that we can try to take advantage of a little bit, but uh, we know we know we got our hands full tonight, that's for sure. As you prepared for this game against Fort Fry, what were some of the things you emphasized to your team in preparation? We It's closing out on the perimeter, uh, running them off the line as much as possible. We don't want them to get hot from the perimeter. Also, taking care of the basketball. They don't hurt themselves. They're a very disciplined team, both offensively and defensively. So we need to make sure that we take care of the basketball and don't give them turnovers and you know transition points, easy baskets for them. So that's something that we've concentrated on. Yeah. Any other keys to victory tonight? Rebounding the basketball. Uh, no second chance points. We cannot give up offensive rebounds. That's another point that uh, we've emphasized. So taking care of the basketball. And, Rebounding, hopefully we knock down some shots too. I think the other night against Harrison, Harrison Central, we were 2 of 15, I think, from the perimeter. So we're really hoping we can knock down some shots tonight. All right, well, good luck in the game against the Cadets. All right, thanks, Casey. All right, that's Ridgewood head coach Toy Dolick. Back with more after this on WTNS Kashaka. Coach's Corner has been brought to you by the Inslee Insurance Agency, 433 Walnut Street in Kashaka. Call the Inslee Insurance Agency at 740 
1-800-242-1811 or go to InsleeAgency.com. Life is full of uncertainties. What happens to your assets after you pass away shouldn't be one of them. At Raymond James Financial Services, we offer a transfer on death agreement that allows your estate to be held in a brokerage account, so it avoids the probate process and goes directly to your heirs. To find out how to make things easier for your loved ones, call financial advisor Shane Pyle at 622-3110, located in Coshocton. Raymond James Financial Services, member FINRA SIPIC. Life well planned. If you are involved in an accident, you want your vehicle to be repaired quickly and correctly? I'm Stacy Rice, Office Manager of Kashok Conclusion, where we put you, the customer, first. We complete your auto body repairs as promised, we guarantee our work, and we use the latest environmental friendly paint products from PPG. Whenever you are involved in a collision, come to Kashok Inclusion Center, 225 Main Street in Town Center, Kashokton, across from Wilson's Carpet and Furniture, or call us at 623-7347. People's Bank has been committed to local communities for almost 120 years, and we remain committed during these uncertain times. Whether you are a current client or new to People's Bank, we are here for you. This is true for both businesses and individuals. As a community bank, we know how important it is to support local businesses as they are the backbone to the local economy. If you have questions or need financial assistance, please don't hesitate to reach out to us at our branch at 200 Main Street in Coshocton. People's Bank, member FD. IC equal housing lender. In life, you get what you pay for, and you always look to save a little extra cash. But when it comes to your car, do you really want to cut corners? Or do you want to make sure, in the event of an accident, you get your vehicle fixed the right way? Brillhart's Body Shop will give you the quality, attention to detail, and satisfaction you deserve when getting your vehicle fixed. Give Brillhart's Body Shop a call at 740 622 0121 or stop by 622 Main Street in Coshocton. With American National Life Insurance, you get coverage options that can be tailored to your individual or group needs, including whole life, term life, and universal life insurance. That combined with an agent who is ready to provide knowledgeable personal service for your financial security. Let the John I. Nello Insurance Agency be your insurance ally. Call us today at 740-295- 9460 American National Insurance Company, Galveston, Texas. Coshocton Regional Medical Center's Urgent Care is now open. When the unexpected happens, you can count on Urgent Care to get you back in the game. With a quick walk in visit, you can be back on the road to recovery. Urgent Care is located at 406 South 15th Street in Coshocton. Open seven days a week with no appointment needed. Visit coshoctonhospital.org to learn more. Coshocton Regional Medical Center where care matters most. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Beverly, Ohio for District Tournament Basketball here on FM 99.3 WTNS. I'm Casey Claxton, setting in for Steve Corey's tonight, joined by Mr. Chris Wallace. Tonight it is the Ridgewood Generals matching up against the Cadets of Beverly Fort Fry, the cadets, the number one seed in the tournament, as we heard from Coach Dolick earlier in Coach's Corner, going up against those Ridgewood Generals, Fort Fry, fresh off a 53-45 victory over Sandy Valley, the number 10 seed, while Ridgewood a big win over Harrison Central in 55-47 fashion. Chris, we are looking for an excellent game tonight between two teams that uh, really have high hopes heading into this district tournament. You know, we certainly are, Casey. You look at a, a number one seed versus a number three seed, and you already know it's going to be a good game. Uh, we got to travel down here to Fort Fry last year to cover a game, and uh, it seems like the cadets have kind of kept things rolling again this year with a few of the same starters, and really just looking forward to, to see what Ridgewood can do tonight. You know, I think uh, Coach Dolick talked about maybe pounding the ball down low in the blocks and getting some high percentage shots down there and, and, and Fort Fry not having as much height. So I look for that to be something that Ridgewood really kind of goes to, to here tonight. Yeah, he mentioned rebounding was going to be a big key, so we will keep our eye on those keys to the game as we are about four minutes away from the starting lineups. We are streaming tonight here on WTNS Coshocton, mywtnsradio.com, also on our YouTube channel because of Internet 
uh, issues here inside of the facility. We are only streaming to YouTube tonight. You can go to Facebook and find the link there. Trevor Griffith will keep everybody up to date with, uh, with any uh, challenges that we may face with our Internet stream here this evening. But uh, go to our YouTube channel, just a simple search on WTNS Radio on YouTube, and you will be able to find the game streaming live on YouTube. I'm Casey Claxton with Chris Wallace. We'll be back to have the starting lineups and then look to get this one underway in just a few moments here on WTNS Coshocton. You can't be an outlaw without breaking a few rules. It's our new independent three-link suspension and the feel of a 1,000 cc's of turf-defying power. It's a tougher-than-nails attitude that leaves a clean cut and every other mower in its wake. There's a new class of outlaws in bad boy country. Rule breakers, every one. Get your bad boy mower at the Power Shop, County Road 9, West Lafayette, 740-545-9011. Bad boy mowers, mow with an attitude. Hi, this is Jeff Drennan from the Jeff Drennan Dealerships, and it's time to talk about the power of three. What is the power of three? It's three dealerships, three times the selection, three times the service, and three times the people, and always the best deal. The Power of Three gives you nine all-American-made brands from GM, Chrysler, and Ford. Simply put, the Power of Three means you are covered. Look no further than the Jeff Drennan dealerships and the Power of Three for your next vehicle purchase. Visit us today at jeffdrennan.com. Shop and Opportunity School is one of 86 high school dropout prevention and credit recovery programs in the state of Ohio. We receive a rating that exceeds standards in all graduation areas on our state report card. The Opportunity School has the number one graduation rate of the 86 similar programs in the state. We're proud of the efforts of our students and staff to attain that ranking. It's a rewarding experience for all of our staff to see our students earn their high school diplomas. Call the Coshocton Opportunity School at 740-622-3600 or call Becky at 740-295-7626. The 2021 Ford Bronco Sport is finally here at Village Motors in Millersburg. Hi, this is Deke Miller, and I would like to personally invite you in to test drive Ford's exciting addition to the small SUV segment. Also, the all-new 2021 Ford F-150 has arrived, too. How do you improve the best truck on the market? You do it with a power up and down tailgate that doubles as a workbench, available onboard generators, and an available hybrid powertrain. Check out the all-new Bronco Sport and 21 F-150 soon at Village Motors in Millersburg. What's the perfect snack food? Well, let me give you a hint. It comes in a variety of flavors. You can eat it with your fingers. It doesn't leave a mess. It's good for you, and it's very affordable. Have you guessed yet? It's cheese, and nobody does it better than Pearl Valley cheese. Pearl Valley offers over 25 different kinds of cheese, including mild Swiss, pepper jack, mozzarella, Colby Longhorn, smoky cheddar, provolone, and American. For the perfect snack or compliment to any meal, don't forget the cheese. Pearl Valley cheese is located on State Route 93, or give them a call at 545-6002. This guy has a mattress on the roof of his car. She's putting on makeup while she's driving. Turn signals, people. It's not you, it's them. But your independent insurance agent has you covered. They'll help you choose the Grange Auto coverage you want for your unique needs. You can't choose who's on the road, but you can choose the right protection for the way they drive. Call Albertson Insurance at 740-622-0572. Policy and coverage not available in all states. People's Bank has been committed to local communities for almost 120 years, and we remain committed during these uncertain times. Whether you are a current client or new to People's Bank, we are here for you. This is true for both businesses and individuals. As a community bank, we know how important it is to support local businesses as they are the backbone to the local economy. If you have questions or need financial assistance, please don't hesitate to reach out to us at our branch at 200 Main Street in Coshocton. People's Bank, member F. DIC, Equal Housing Lender. This is Randy Jacobs from DAC Vitamins and Minerals. We've been feeding champion show animals since 1983, bringing you the best in supplements for your horses and livestock to help them look and perform their best. Whether in a show ring, pulling a plow, your buggy, or just pets in the field, they can look and feel their best with DAC. Find a dealer near you at FeedDAC.com or call the office at 800-921-9121 and talk to Trapper Troyer for details. And always remember to feed DAC. 
stop in to Amici's Pizza before or after the game for the area's best in homemade pizza, salads, subs, wings, and more. Amici's Pizza uses handmade dough made fresh every day. For all the flavor but less calories, try their cauliflower crust pizza or other items like spaghetti and meatballs or chicken alfredo. Amici's Pizza delivers free to West Lafayette and surrounding areas. For big city taste at a small town price, it's Amici's Pizza, 740-545-1923. If you're a business or do-it-yourselfer looking for the best possible siding for your home or office, then stop by MRV Siding Supply. They offer the number one rated panel on the market, Cedar Max Super Polymer Insulated Siding by Provia. Cedar Max provides outstanding performance inside and out with impact resistance, impervious to moisture, flame retardant, and noise reduction, giving you peace of mind. For Cedar Max Super Polymer Insulated Siding by Provia, call MRV Siding Supply at 800 524 7436. Visit them on the web at MRVSiding.com. Welcome back to Fort Fry High School. Tonight's starting lineups is brought to you by the Home Loan Savings Bank. For all your banking needs, visit the Home Loan Savings Bank with offices in Coshocton, West Lafayette, and Mount Vernon. We'll start off with the home team in tonight's contest, the Fort Fry Cadets. At a guard position, a 6'2 senior, number one, Nick Hart. At another guard position, a 6'1 sophomore, number two, Owen Brown. At a guard position, a 6'1 senior, number four, Luke Huffman. At the forward position, a 5'11 senior, number five, Braden Medley. And at a guard position, a 6'1 senior, number 22, Kelton Fogel. Now for the visiting team in tonight's contest, the Ridgewood Generals. At a guard position, a 5'9 senior, number zero, Curtis Varian. At another guard position, a 5'11 junior, number two, Gabe Tingle. At the center position, a 6'4 junior, number 13, Caden Bradford. At the guard position, a 6'1 junior, number 14, Dalton Patterson. And at the forward position, a six-foot senior, number 23, Deontay Brandon. The Generals are coached by Troy Dolick, and for the cadets of Fort Fry, they are led by Eric Henniger. So looking for a good one tonight. Again, Ridgewood coming in with a victory over Harrison Central, 55 to 47. Fort Fry, the number one seed, a 53 to 45 victory over Sandy Valley. And that was a game that was a lot closer than what most people thought it would be. Yeah, you know, a one seed versus a 10 seed. And uh, yeah, I wouldn't expect that one to be very good. But, you know, Sandy Valley always has a, a pretty good team and, and always fighting hard. And well, we were at Ridgewood uh, last week and talking about this game and, and everybody was staying tuned because that determined whether Ridgewood was on the road or at home again. And on the road we are. So everyone was staying tuned to that game, but a, a little bit more too close for comfort. So a, a decent crowd, if you could call it that, has made their way down from Coshocton County and West Lafayette and the surrounding area to see the Generals play here tonight. So many of you may have uh, been to Fort Fry to see basketball games. I know it was uh, a few years ago that Ridgewood played against Fort Fry and claimed a sectional championship. That was in uh, Jamie McRae's last year as head coach. That was whenever you know Ridgewood uh, went on to, uh, to to play for a district championship before falling to Garraway. But uh, this is the first time that a, uh, a Troy Dolick led team has been down here at for, at Fort Fry. But uh, this should be a great game tonight. It, it is a it is a, a smaller type of gym uh, with a very low ceiling. Uh, they have taken great care of this facility and. The staff here has been very, very hospitable to us while we have been setting up. So we, we say thank you to those folks. Yeah, we certainly do. Uh, not very often do you walk through a high school gym and they offer you a water and a cookie, uh, <laughs> but we'll sure take it, uh, yeah. keeping everybody fed. And it wasn't just you and me. It was like a four, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Had the video crew, too. Yeah. They're very accommodating, as you yeah. said. And they even made their own Wi-Fi network for us just yeah. to use tonight. And unfortunately... Uh, Things didn't go down as planned, but uh, we are still streaming on YouTube. Yep. So we uh, we we hope that uh, our our YouTube stream will will stay up and running. We we did kind of uh, decide to make the decision not to stream it to Facebook because the, the more the more locations you try to stream it to, the more bandwidth it has. So uh, so we're streaming off the jet pack, so so to speak tonight. But uh, you can always listen on FM ninety nine point three. 
WTNS. And uh, if you are uh, want to listen only, you can always visit our website, mywtnsradio.com. Or if you have the Mixler app, that's also a great place to, uh, to listen to the audio broadcast here this evening. So both teams are being introduced. They have uh, gone through the cheerleaders. They have gone through the uh, non-starters. And now they are finally getting to the starting lineup. You know, it's interesting, you know, when you come down near the river or come down here into Washington County, I think we were in three or four counties on our way here. We were in, uh, we, we started in Coshocton, and we went into Guernsey County, and then we went uh, just through a little piece of, uh, well, Noble County, and then uh, um, Morgan, and then <laughs> finally settling in Washington County. But uh, th there is no great way to get here. But uh, you just you make your way, and you know it, it is an interesting trip. So it is it is nice to get down here to Beverly, but it is a uh, a beautiful place. So both teams have now been introduced, and we are making uh, the teams are making their way out onto the court. It'll be KB Caden Bradford to jump for the Generals. They are wearing uh, all black tonight with their numbers in silver, trimmed in white. For Fort Fry, they are proudly wearing the red, white, and blue. They are the cadets. So it'll be Nick Hart jumping against Caden Bradford. And the tip will go to the cadets, and they will start with the basketball, moving from right to left. Little mix-up out front. Ball goes out of bounds, and that's going to be a turnover on the cadets. So Ridgewood gets it right back. So a good little defensive pressure there by the Generals. Inbounds pass comes to Dalton Patterson, and here comes Troy Dolick's group. They go to Caden Bradford underneath. Nice move inside. He is fouled immediately. Send him to the line for two shots. So, so quickly, Ridgewood going down underneath to the big fella. Yeah, almost like Coach Dolick said right there in Coach's corner. One to look low, and they look low, and I definitely see the size advantage that Ridgewood has down low. And Caden Bradford just going up strong, but took a little bit of body, kind of forcing him out of bounds. The southpaw misfires on his first shot with the left hand. 7.42, just underway from Fort Fry High School. And Bradford perfect on his second free throw. So the Generals out to a one to nothing lead. And we'll see the Cadets try to break that Ridgewood press right off the bat. Might have got away with an over and back call there, very close. They go down into the left corner. Here's a three-point shot by Luke Huffman. No good. They fight for the rebound. Deontay Brandon comes away with it. He tries to get it to Varian, and it is lost. Cadets get it right back. That's Hart in the far corner. Dribbles baseline. Drive and kick to Owen Brown. Now they will reset back out top. That's Fogel who has it. Now up top again, Fogel, three-point shot. He's a lefty, and he drains the tray, and the cadets are on the board. They lead Ridgewood 3-1. to one. Dalton Patterson loses the handle on it, turnover by the Generals, and now the cadets can't keep control of the basketball as Curtis Varian steals it. Gabe Tingle, drive and kick. He throws it away, and Fort Fry has it right back. Cadets leading 3-1. to one. They have the basketball. Fogel goes left side to Brown. Brown back up top to Nick Hart. He's one of the playmakers on this team. They give it back to Hart. Hart lets loose a high arcing three-point shot. It's no good. Gabe Tingle comes away with the rebound. Generals on the break to Patterson. He will drive into the lane and tries to hand it off to Caden Bradford, but it goes off of Bradford's hand. Might have just went by him too quick. I don't think he saw that one coming. No, I don't even think he got a hand on it. It didn't look like... Uh yeah, he didn't get a hand on this out of bounds. Maybe just skipped off of his shoulder there, but it does go out of bounds. That's another Ridgewood turnover. They trail by two. It's 3-1, to 6.05 to go first period. Here's a three-point shot by Fogel. He drains it, makes it 6-1 to one as the Cadets out to a five-point lead early on. Patterson will drive, looking. He's in the lane, gives it to Tingle. Now they go to Caden Bradford underneath. He's working on Medley. Stepped out of bounds. Stepped on the baseline. That will be another Ridgewood turnover. So that is five giveaways by the Generals. Yeah, in the first two and a half minutes here, and uh, very uncharacteristic of the Ridgewood team, but different environment, first away tournament game. So the Generals will back off of the full court pressure. 
Cadets have the basketball. They lead Ridgewood 6-1. to one. Pass goes over on the left side to Luke Huffman. Now it comes back out top. Dylan Hart, who checked into the game a moment ago, has the ball underneath. Bradford won't let him into the crease. Rebounded by Bradford. Now to Patterson. The Generals come the other direction. Gabe Tingle to Deontay Brandon. General showing patience. Now it's stolen away. Hart picks the pocket of Patterson, and now Patterson will foul Hart on his way to the basket, and that will send the 6-2 senior to the free throw line to shoot two. Pick up a Domino's pizza for after the game. Try a three-topping pizza with any of their five crust options for only $7.99. Or keep the family happy with their $5.99 mix and match deal. Call the Coshocton Dominoes at 622-9345 or the Newcomerstown Dominoes at 498-4131. So Hart misfires on the first free throw. Second one is up and good. And now that makes it a 7-1 game in favor of the Cadets. Curtis Varian with the basketball. Goes right side to Deontay Brandon. Dribbles in the lane. Little spin around. Now hands it off to Tingle. Keegan Millender with the basketball who came in after the foul. Millender looking. He's double teamed and uh, has it knocked away. And it's going to be out of bounds. Last touch by the Cadets. Generals will keep it. Yeah, Ridgewood just kind of uh, looking a little bit out of sorts here on, on their offensive end. And, you know, six turnovers here in the first quarter. Just not like them. Generals have yet to make a field goal. Bradford has a free throw. That's it for the Generals. Here's Millender, left side, dribbling with his left hand, and now he is going to be fouled. And it looks like they're going to tag Dylan Hart with that personal. So that's going to be the second team foul. Entering the ball game is Garrett Lippett. Gabe Tinga will inbound it on the baseline. Tingle looking, gets it into Caden Bradford. Between two defenders, puts it up with a left hand. It's no good. Rebounded by Fort Fry. Here comes the Cadets. Over on the right side is Fogel. Dribbling towards the baseline. Stops, and now they're calling him for dra traveling. Dragged his foot. Be the fourth turnover on Fort Fry here in the first quarter. 4.15 to play here in the first frame. Fort Fry leading 7-1. to one. They've got two three-pointers and a field goal. And Ridgewood with a charity toss by Caden Bradford at 7-1. to one. Millinder right side. Now it comes back to Caden Bradford. Over to Curtis Varian. Here's a three-point shot by Gabe Tingle up and in. So Tingle with the three-pointer and now... Gabe comes over and knocks the ball out of bounds. He was trying to sell that <laughs> and uh, try to give the Generals the basketball. He, he was acting like that, that maybe Fogel had touched it last. But uh, Gabe being Gabe, as they say. Cadets will keep the basketball. It's Nick Hart dribbling. Millinder applies the pressure. Generals in a man-to-man -man defense. Now here is... Goes into the left corner. There's a three-point shot by Nick Hart. It's up and no good. Curtis Varian, the smallest man on the floor, comes away with the rebound to Tingle. Now to Millender, and he can't find the handle on it. Nope, just out of his reach there. Seventh turnover by Ridgewood. Clock is stopped with 3.24 to go in the first period. Generals trailing by three. to the gym, obviously uh, only 75 tickets uh, given to each school. So it, it, was, uh, it was somewhat shared. The only 150 people allowed to, to be in tonight just as far as tickets are concerned. Yeah, and it seems like more than that, but yeah. uh, in a gym this size, I guess that's the safest option. And being down here a few years ago, whenever the Generals won against the Cadets, it just seemed like it was so loud. But it does seem a lot quieter tonight, obviously, with, uh, with the – Definite smaller crowd. That's Lippett with the basketball out top. Now to Fogel who dribbles. Looks to the right side. Gives it over to Huffman. Huffman comes back out top to Nick Hart. Senior guard dribbles out top between the circles. Gives it right side to Huffman. Now they go underneath. Shot is up and good. 
was a 44, and I don't have I a don't, 44 I don't have on a, my roster. I don't have a 44 on my roster either. We'll try to sort that out. But the big fella puts it in, makes it a 9-4 game. Generals lose the basketball at the other end. Here is Hart. His shot is up and no good. Ball fought for. Hart gets the loose ball. And finally, it's Dylan Patterson who comes away with it. Now we have a foul. So they're going to say a foul on number – it's going to go against Kelton, number 22, Kelton Fogel. So General's going to keep the basketball. Christopher, maybe you can ask one of those JV players who number 44 is. That's that a they good might, idea. They might be able to tell us who, uh, who that young man is, get his name in the scoring column. Here, Braden Molesky had checked into the game after the foul. And now Patterson goes to Caden Bradford. It's knocked away, and the Cadets have the ball. Come the other direction, and a shot is uh, up and no good, but a foul is called against the Generals. Foul's going to go against Gabe Tingle. Did you figure out who that 44 was, Chris? 44 is Casey Brooker. Casey Brooker. All right. He was 24, now he's 44. Okay, we know who he is now. He's got a good name, though, you know? Yeah. All right, at the free throw line will be Owen Brown. Brown's first free throw is up and in. Deontay Brandon back in to the ball game for the Generals. Keegan Millender will take a break. Brown for the backside of two, and it is perfect. 11 to four, Cadets lead the Generals, 151 to play here in the first period. Ridgewood's had a tough time hanging on to the basketball. Eight turnovers here in the first period. They've got twice as many turnovers as they do points, and there's number nine. Molesky lost it. He tried to get it back. It goes out of bounds. Last touch by Molesky. But uh, this is not what the doctor ordered for Ridgewood in the first period. No, it's not. And uh, officials letting them play a little bit. A lot of contact down here on Ridgewood's offensive end and uh, a lot of hands in the passing lanes and letting them play a little bit tonight. Nick Hart has the basketball at the free throw line. Tries to get through two defenders. His shot is no good. Rebounded by Deontay Brandon, and he will bring it ahead. Here's Hart. Wreaking havoc on him. The ball tipped away, and they're going to say last touch by Fort Fry. Ridgewood will keep it. I'd say a heart was just coming in, just kind of sneaking in behind to try to swipe it away. Now Generals will uh, bring in another substitution. It's going to be Marcus Leindecker who will replace Deontay Brandon. Curtis Varian will inbound the basketball for the Generals. They get it to Patterson, Molesky. Around the horn it goes to Leindecker. Now to Patterson, dribble drive, nice pass, went to Caden Bradford. His shot was no good, and he's going to be fouled. Tell you, the home faithful wanted a charge there, and uh, a good bit of acting, you might say. I mean, Bradford's a big fella, but they, he went. that boy went down hard. Yeah, he did go down, <laughs> and that was a nice pass by Dalton Patterson, a little two-man game with Patterson and, and uh, Bradford there, and a nice pass, and then... You know, nice con went through the contact, and I, I almost thought it could have been a charge. Yeah. The littlest player on the floor against the biggest player on the floor, and but uh, Caden so, Bradford. So Nick Hart assessed the foul. Bradford makes one of two free throws. He's hit the backside of both each time he's been at the line. So it's 11 to 5. Generals have... A pair of free throws by Bradford and a three-pointer by Gabe Tingle. And they trail by six. Basketball's out top. That is Huffman into the lane. Passes it up to Hart. Hart now dribbling down to 45 seconds on the clock. And now they will show patience and bring it back out front. And they get it to Brooker. He'll try to move. Now it comes over to Brown. They'll reset. Nick Hart still dribbling, down to 30 seconds, goes into the lane, is shot a little long, rebounded by KB. Bradford to Leindecker, ball loose on the court, and Leindecker finally picks it up, still down. Tell you, it looked like a playground game there for a minute.
but finally picking it up is Owen Brown, and he drops it through for a basket. Timeout on the floor with 15 seconds remaining. A 30-second timeout. We'll go ahead and keep it right here. If you're in the market for new floor covering, stop into Fisher Decorating Center for a great selection of quality flooring along with professional service and installation. That's Fisher Decorating Center, helping you make your house a home since 1946. And don't forget, coming up at the close of our contest, the Warehouse Stakenstein will sponsor another player of the game. Tonight's player of the game going to receive a gift certificate for a famous warehouse cheeseburger and an order of their legendary onion rings, courtesy of the Warehouse Stakenstein. I want to say thanks to our streaming crew here tonight, Fred Williams and also Andrew Wallace, bringing you the video on YouTube. We've posted a link on Facebook, so if you're looking for it there, just uh, click on the YouTube link. Trevor Griffith back at WTNS Sports Central, keeping us uh, online social media-wise. So hopefully everyone is getting the opportunity to see the game on YouTube here this evening. 15 seconds remaining in the first period. They'll roll it out to Dalton Patterson. Gets across the timeline. Generals will need a basket here. They trail 13 to 5. Down to 8 seconds. Tries to roll off of a pick. Maletsky lets fly a 3. A little strong. Linedecker the rebound to Patterson. A shot at the buzzer. And it won't go. A little short. So 8 minutes in the books. Generals trailing by 8. It is the Cadets 13. Generals 5, back to start our second quarter of play after these messages on WTNS Coshocton. Hi, this is Jeff Drennan from the Jeff Drennan Dealerships, and it's time to talk about the power of three. What is the power of three? It's three dealerships, three times the selection, three times the service, and three times the people, and always the best deal. The power of three gives you nine all-American-made brands from GM, Chrysler, and Ford. Simply put, the Power 3 means you are covered. Look no further than the Jeff Drennan dealerships and the Power 3 for your next vehicle purchase. Visit us today at jeffdrennan.com. I'm Malcolm. I'm a commercial cash management specialist, but I'm also a leader and a musician. At Park National Bank, we're more than our job titles, and you're more than an account number. You get personal attention and direct access to a caring, compassionate banker who respects and responds to your needs and goals. Find Malcolm or a banker near you at parknationalbank.com. Park National Bank, where you mean more. Member FDIC, parknationalbank.com. Back at Fort Fry High School, generals trailing 13 to five. As the Cadets jumping out to an eight-point lead, here's Braden Molesky, a three-point shot for the Generals. It's no good. Rebounded by the Cadets. That's Nick Hart. Outlet pass left side. Fogel, his three won't go. Marcus Leindecker with the board. Curtis Varian brings it ahead for the Generals. Now to Molesky. Patterson to Caden Bradford. So Molesky, Leindecker, Varian, Bradford. And Patterson make up the five for the Generals. They go inside to KB. His shot up and no good. A fight for the rebound. And they are still tangled up there. They're going to call jump ball. Yeah, it looked like uh, Ridgewood could have gotten an over the back call. As, but uh, I guess possession will maintain with Fort Fry. And they kind of sandwiched them both in there. You know, you had uh, Leindecker, who's no slouch. He and KB with Booker. Those are th three of the biggest boys on the floor. And that, that was like old-fashioned wrestling there for just a minute. <laughs> so after the jump ball, the Cadets will have it. Ridgewood will have it on the next possession arrow. Here's a three-point shot up and no good by Medley. Now they come left side. It goes out of bounds. And they're going to say Ridgewood basketball. So last touch by the Cadets. So Owen Brown kind of shaking his head saying, now, are you sure? Yeah, Ridgewood really needs to get something going offensively. It looks like Fort Fry is going to start with their first time with the full court press, but small gym, different, you know, low ceiling. Just got to get the feel for the backboards and, and, yep. and the rims and get shots to fall. Yeah, they were having a hard time getting one of the backboards up whenever we arrived. Here's Tingle. Now to Caden Bradford. He's caught underneath the basket to Patterson. A nice little move, and he puts it up and in, drawing the foul. He'll be at the line for one. Yeah, nice pass by Caden Bradford. Saw a cutting Dalton Patterson and nice finesse with the finish as he took the contact. So that'll be the first points for Patterson. 
Makes it 13 to seven. So he will be at the line. Patterson to shoot one. Eyes to hoop, free throw is up and good. So Dalton Patterson with the old fashioned three point play makes it 13 to eight with 6.40 to play here in the first half. The Generals trailing Beverly Fort Fry. This district semifinal. Casey Claxton here with Chris Wallace on WTNS Coshocton. Glad to have you with us. Listening on 99.3 or watching on YouTube. Here's a shot by Hart. It's no good. Generals with the board. Dalton Patterson quickly ahead for the Generals. Now he will stop. Now nice little move to the basket. No good. Hart comes away with the rebound. Quick break to Brown. He flips it up and through for the Cadets. So Brown has six. Six minutes to go here in the first half. Generals trailing 15 to eight. Caden Bradford with it out front. Outlets to Varian. Now back to Bradford. He will stop with the left hand. Puts it up and in. I tell you, all night long on that kind of play, if they give him that space, you just keep feeding KB. 15 to 10, Generals trail by five. Here's a turnover by the Cadets. Patterson, a three on three break. He will stop, gives it to Bradford. Boy, he was thinking about a three pointer there for a second. Now to Patterson, puts it off the glass and in. So the Generals starting to come alive now. Ridgewood trailing by three. Here's a shot by Huffman. Tipped out of bounds, Generals will keep it. And that's the kind of Ridgewood basketball you like to see. Yeah, kind of the Ridgewood basketball we're used to seeing and starting to get things going offensively. Shots starting to fall, uh, starting to move offensively, also getting some nice cuts to the basket. So Ridgewood trailed 13 to five at the end of the first period of play. And uh, they were cursed by nine turnovers in that first period. But they've uh, somewhat righted the ship after the end of one. So they were down by as many as eight. Now they just trail by three. Gabe Tingle is back into the game. Gives it to Patterson and he's hot. Puts it up and in. So Dalton Patterson. He's got seven for the Generals. Seven of the 14. And here's a shot by Nick Hart up and in. So back to a three-point game, 17 to 14. Patterson will run the point for the orange and black. Now he will dribble, gives to Gabe Tingle right in front of us, in front of that Fort Fry bench, into the lane. Now to Molesky for a three, it's a little strong. Ball tipped around, nice save by Gabe Tingle, but they said he stepped on the sideline, so that will, that will turn it over. So Tingle going to have a seat, and it will be Deontay Brandon back into the ballgame for Ridgewood. Nick Hart will trigger it in to Luke Huffman. Generals trailing by three, 17-14, with 4-11 to play in the first half. Generals coming out in his own defense now. Huffman with it on the left side, back out to Hart. Now over on the right to Brown. They swing it to the far side of the court. Now back to the left to Medley. Off of a pick is Hart. Didn't see the give and go. Now right side. Cadet showing patience. Come back to Braden Medley. Now to Brown. Clock moving, 3.35 to go first half. Three-point lead for the Cadets. Now here is Brown, and he is going to be pushed by Deontay Brandon. Brandon did an excellent job in that game against Harrison Central, and, you know, they, they have charged him with guarding Nick Hart tonight. Yeah, you step up and have a, a great defensive, you know, game and, and guard one of the best players you've had to face all year, and next thing you know, you, you get the assignment the next week. Rightfully so, though. Uh, Deontay Brandon plays excellent defense. So both teams kind of coming with a heavy package now as uh, Brooker is back into the game. Dylan Hart also checks in. And Ridgewood going with sophomore Colin Smith. Caden Bradford sizing up against Brooker. 
Shot won't go. Generals with the rebound. They trail by three. Down to 3.19 to go. Smith over on the far side. He will dribble it out front. Gives it to Varian. Varian back to Deontay Brandon. He will drive. Might have got away with a walk. Outlet pass to Varian, and his shot from the baseline won't go. Down to three minutes to play. Here's a three-point shot by Owen Brown. Misses badly. Generals with the board. Caden Bradford with the honors. Now to Patterson. Colin Smith for three. It's no good. Rebounded by the Cadets. So both teams letting it fly. Brown back out to Lippitt. Now back to Nick Hart. Hart dribbling with the left hand. He lets it go from 16 feet. Patterson with the rebound after the missed shot. Patterson across the timeline, into the lane. Spins, turns, gives it to Smith. Smith will dribble, kind of fights his way through. Bounce pass to Patterson. Tries to go underneath, and he's going to be pushed across the baseline. That's going to be a foul against Fort Fry. Advanced Spinal Care and Rehabilitation is now accepting new patients. They specialize in sports medicine as well as joint, low back, and neck pain. They believe in an integrated approach through massage, chiropractic, nutrition, and state-of-the-art therapies to achieve one goal, for their patients to regain their health as quickly and responsibly as possible. Gabe Tingle back into the game. Deontay Brandon will take a seat. Dalt Patterson keeps it in play. Almost went out. Almost an over and back violation. Here is Colin Smith. Kind of runs into a defender. Now gives it to Gabe Tingle. Tingle slicing through the lane. Tried to loop it up with a, a little underhanded shot. But uh, <laughs> they did not call a foul. They just said it was knocked out of bounds. So Generals will keep it. That was interesting. Yeah, Gabe Tingle had to tuck that under his arm like he was running through the offensive yep. line there. Now they throw it all the way into the backcourt. And Patterson will just let it go and then not have to worry about the over and back as long as he doesn't touch it. Patterson to Tingle. Under two minutes to go in the first half. Generals trailing by three, 17-14. Tingle to Patterson. Patterson off a of Tingle pick. Now he gives it back to Tingle. Three-point shot by Varian is short. Generals only finding the three on one occasion tonight, and that was off the hands of Tingle in the early part of the game. They're their first field goal. Now they're looking to play some defense here with 1.30 to go first half. The Cadets looking to slow things down. That's Dylan Hart who has it. Generals playing some D. Now they give it back to Nick Hart. It almost looks like that they're just going to play the patience game. They got a three-point lead. I don't know if they're going to just hold on to it for the last minute. We shall see. Now Nick Hart to the basket. He can't get it to go. Ball's kind of kicked around. Now they're just diving all over the place for it. And it's finally picked up by Fort Fry. Let's tell you, throwing their bodies to the wind there. Now they go to Booker. Gabe Tingle swipes it away. And now with 40 seconds, I tell you, Gabe was thinking about throwing it long, but he's like, hey, let's just let's play for one final shot here. We're down by three. He gives it up to Patterson. Cooler heads prevail there. So Patterson kind of directing traffic. Now gives it to Tingle. Down to 22 seconds. Patterson yet to put it on the floor. Holds up a single finger. And now he's going to be molested, and it's taken away. So Fort Fry has it. They go to Booker in the lane. Shot with seven seconds left. It's no good. And now Patterson the other direction. Down to three. He'll let one fly. No good. A tip-in attempt at the buzzer, and it's no good. And we have reached the end of our first half of play. A low-scoring affair between top-seeded Fort Fry and the scrappy bunch wearing orange and black tonight. It is Fort Fry 17 and Ridgewood 14. This is high school basketball on WTNS Coshocton. Hi, this is Lydia from the Coshocton Coffee Connection. If you're wanting to get out of the office for lunch, the Coshocton Coffee Connection welcomes you to dine in with us or use our convenient drive through Try our turkey bacon club, BLT, grilled cheese, or a chicken salad or egg salad on a croissant. Don't forget to pair it with your favorite hot frozen or ice drink. Stop by the Coshocton Coffee Connection or call in your order at 623-3234. 
Coshocton Dentistry offers professional, state-of-the-art dental care in a small-town practice. Doctors Brian Dunlap and Patrick Lopper and their entire team are dedicated to educating you with the help of digital technology to give personalized dental care that you deserve. Their goal is to simply help their patients keep all their teeth for a lifetime in maximum comfort, function, and aesthetics. Coshocton Dentistry is currently accepting new patients. To schedule your appointment with the local professionals at Coshocton Dentistry, give them a call at 740-622-5774 or stop by 448 Main Street in Coshocton. Visit their website, coshoctondentistry.com. Coshocton Regional Medical Center's Urgent Care is now open. When the unexpected happens, you can count on Urgent Care to get you back in the game. With a quick walk-in visit, you can be back on the road to recovery. Urgent Care is located at 406 South 15th Street in Coshocton. Open seven days a week with no appointment needed. Visit coshoctonhospital.org to learn more. Coshocton Regional Medical Center, where care matters most. Don't let their name fool you. At Coshocton Brake and Supply, they do a whole lot more than just brakes. They can order tires, do alignments and suspension work, offer engine diagnostics, oil changes and tune-ups, and air conditioning service. And don't forget about their free nationwide auto repair warranty. But it doesn't stop there. Coshocton Brake and Supply also offers new hydraulic hoses and fittings and hydraulic hose repairs. That's Coshocton Brake and Supply, located at 601 Walnut Street, or call them at 740-622-0595. Claxon Custom Printing and Promotions is a proud supporter of high school athletics. Contact Casey Claxon or Judd Bone at ClaxonPrinting.com for printed t-shirts, embroidery, and branded promotional products for your booster club or business. We can also help your team set up an online fundraising store to sell your team apparel to fans across the country. Visit ClaxonPrinting.com or call 740-623-2145. Stop in to Amici pizza before or after the game for the area's best in homemade pizza, salads, subs, wings, and more. Amici's Pizza uses handmade dough made fresh every day. For all the flavor but less calories, try their cauliflower crust pizza or other items like spaghetti and meatballs or chicken alfredo. Amici's Pizza delivers free to West Lafayette and surrounding areas. For big city taste at a small town price, it's Amici's Pizza, 740-545-1923. Back at Beverly Fort Fry High School, a low-scoring affair between the cadets of Fort Fry and the Ridgewood Generals. It is Fort Fry 17 and Ridgewood 14. Chris, this is not the kind of game that we expected. You know, we, we thought maybe this could be a, a run-and-gun type of game. You know, we thought Ridgewood would go underneath, and, and they did at the start. But, you know, turnovers has been a huge factor in this contest. Yes, it certainly has, and uh, a very physical game, and the officials letting a lot go, and just a lot of hands on, on you when you're driving to the lane, a lot of hands yeah. uh, just, you know, over the backs that aren't getting called. It's just a pretty physical game, and, and that paired with the small gym and, you know, a fairly decent-sized crowd for the small gyms really got everybody kind of wild. I took my headset off after that second quarter there, and uh, the Ridgewood fans were, were much louder than I had expected, and they were giving the, the officials an earful. Yeah, and, you know, I remember being down here at, at what was a uh, – a sectional championship game a few years back and you know the officials in that contest really let them play and if that's the brand of basketball that that uh, that they are used to down here it's probably nothing different but you know this is one of those games where you know you've got people with hands all over the place and uh, you know I mean Ridgewood is putting up a good fight but only 10 fouls between the two teams but we have uh, a huge number of turnovers I'm looking at your little cheat sheet there Ridgewood with 13 and that's got to be a big factor with uh, with with Ridgewood's lack of scoring. Yeah, most times Ridgewood, you know, ends the game with 13 turnovers, uh, so let alone here in the first half. But I have a feeling they're going to adjust with Coach Dolick, uh, tell them to play a little more physical. And, and we've seen these officials in many games we've had up at Ridgewood, up at any of the, the county schools in Coshocton. But uh, they're letting things play down south here, and so I think Ridgewood needs to change their kind of way of playing here tonight. Fort Fry led at the end of the first eight minutes of play. They jumped out to a 13-5 to lead. Ridgewood fought back, outscoring Fort Fry 9-4 in that seven, second period. 
And that's where we stand at halftime. It is Fort Fry 17 and Ridgewood 14. The Generals are led in scoring tonight by Dalton Patterson. He has seven. And Caden Bradford has four for Ridgewood. Nick Hart and Owen Brown, each with a half dozen for the Cadets. Chris, give us the team numbers for the two teams tonight. Sure. Uh, as you mentioned, Fort Fry on top, 17 to 14. Three-point land, Ridgewood, one of seven for 14%. Fort Fry, two of eight for 25%. Two-point field goals, Ridgewood was four of eight for 50%. Fort Fry was four of 13 for 30%. From the free throw line, Ridgewood 3 of 5 for 60%. Fort Fry 3 of 4 for 75%. In the rebounding department, it is Ridgewood out-rebounding Fort Fry 13 to 7. And in turnovers, Ridgewood with 13, Fort Fry with 6. Hey, if you're in the locker room with, half, uh, with uh, Coach Dolik at halftime tonight, what do you think his point of emphasis is going to be? physicality and uh, and hustle. You know, I, there was a couple times there on some of those turnovers where the ball's gotten kicked, no call. And Fort Fry's diving on the floor, and they're coming up with the ball. And, and Ridgewood's kind of standing around waiting for the call that didn't happen and, and hasn't happened, and, and then they kind of lose out with the turnover on that one. So physicality, taking care of the basketball too. I, you know, a lot of those turnovers come from just passes that aren't, aren't there and, and people who aren't, aren't looking for the ball. So uh, taking care of the ball, rebounding, and playing more physical is what I would change here in the second half. And we did see an improvement by the Generals in that second period. Just looking at the turnovers alone, they had, they had was it nine or ten turnovers in the first half or in the first period, and then uh, only three in the second. So they, they did put more points on the board, and it, it showed because they, they took better care of the basketball throughout that second eight-minute frame. Yeah, they just started out a little sluggish, and, and you know, as we mentioned, uh, different gym, different atmosphere, different uh, level, different – type of play, uh, the, the physicality of the play. And so I think they kind of took a little bit to get adjusted and hopefully they can come out here in the third quarter and, and show them what they have. Both teams making their way out for their warm-ups. We are just a little more than two minutes away from starting off the third quarter. We will take a break. This is high school basketball on WTNS Coshocton. The Ridgewood General Store has a little bit of everything you need. They have a large variety of delicious sandwiches, fries, deli, meat and cheese, locally raised meats, big city cappuccinos, vast array of bakery items, bubble teas, and produce. They also carry all your Ridgewood apparel. Check out their new layout and items. Stop by the Ridgewood General Store, 101 East Main Street in West Lafayette. The Ridgewood General Store, bringing great things to great people. Hi, this is Jeff Drennan from the Jeff Drennan Dealerships, and it's time to talk about the power of three. What is the power of three? It's three dealerships. Three times the selection, three times the service, and three times the people, and always the best deal. The power of three gives you nine all-American made brands from GM, Chrysler, and Ford. Simply put, the power of three means you are covered. Look no further than the Jeff Drennan dealerships and the power of three for your next vehicle purchase. Visit us today at jeffdrennan.com. Given Dawson Paisley Funeral Home has been serving Coshocton area families for over 70 years. I am Jessica Paisley and we are honored that so many of you have chosen Given Dawson Paisley. Our membership in the Dignity Memorial Network allows us to offer services that no other funeral home can offer. Whether you are pre-planning or in your time of need, Given Dawson Paisley Funeral Home would be honored to serve your family now and in the future. Advanced Spinal Care and Rehabilitation of Coshocton provides personalized health care that makes a difference. If you've been suffering from neck or back pain, chiropractic care is a non-invasive treatment that can help you feel better. Advanced Spinal Care and Rehabilitation is proud to provide patients with advanced physical medicine. This type of rehabilitation is focused on enhancing and restoring the functional abilities of those suffering from physical impairments. To schedule your appointment, call Advanced Spinal Care and Rehabilitation at 291-8100 or stop by 112 Chestnut Street in Coshocton. Back at Fort Fry High School, ready to start our third quarter of play. Our score at the break, Fort Fry 17, Ridgewood 14. Chris, you've got some other halftime scores from games around the area tonight. We certainly do, courtesy of Trevor Griffith back at WTNS Sports Central. At the half, Tusky Valley 32, Morgan 18. And at the half, Highland 25, Stralsburg 15. Also at the half, Malvern 38, Shenandoah 14. So the, the winner of this game will play the winner of Tusky Valley and Morgan. Ridgewood. 
Ridgewood to start with the basketball. Generals trailing by three. Winner of this game tonight will obviously, as you mentioned, Tusky Valley and Morgan, that's a, a big matchup. Generals all too familiar with the Trojans. Generals come up short on their first offensive attempt. Now playing some defense, ball loose over on the far side. Deontay Brandon picks up the loose ball. That's a Ridgewood steal to Caden Bradford. He is, has it knocked out of his hands. You don't see him blocked that often. Dalton Patterson picks up the loose ball, and now we're going to have a whistle and a jump ball. A couple of players reaching in. Patterson thought he was fouled, but he'll just hand it back over to the official, and I'd say on Ridgewood about will give it up. 98% of nights, that would be a foul because he took it in there, yeah. and uh, I think Fort Fry had a hold of his arm, but play on. 17-14. We've played a little less than a minute. Now Gabe Tingle's going to be whistled for a foul. That's a good battle between he and Fogel. Those two like to get after it. Keegan Millender back into the game for the Orange and Black. Coach Hedinger also getting the player up off the bench. That's Garrett Lippett as he will come back into the game off the bench. Luke Huffman will trigger, trigger it in. He gets it to Nick Hart. Here comes the Cadets. Hart between the legs, goes left side. Owen Brown with it. Back to Hart for three. That's a little strong. Goes off of the leg of Keegan Millender, and the ball will stay with Fort Fry. Fort Fry get the offensive rebound on that one. Clock is stopped with 6.47 to play here in the third quarter. Fort Fry to inbound it under their own basket. They get it into Nick Hart. They bring it out top. They try to slide it underneath, but a foul is going to be called under the basket. Wow. Yeah, this is just what drives you crazy when you're going to let all, all that play happen the entire game, and then you're going to call a ticky-tack foul like that. So Fort Friday inbound it. They get to, to, Nick, to Nick Hart. He's their playmaker. Working on Bradford. Takes him to school. Puts it up and in. So Nick Hart with the first point of the second half. 19-14. Fort Fry leading. Now Bradford has it. Right side to Patterson. Into the lane. Through the foul line. He gets fouled. Puts it up and in. He'll be at the line for one. Hey, that was an excellent play by Dalton Patterson. Had a nice floater after the contact and just got it to go in. And a little bit outside of the, the lane there, so a nice shot. So Patterson drains it. After he's fouled, he'll go to the line for one. Tries to cut into that Fort Fry lead. He misses the free throw, but we have a foul on the fight for the rebound. It's going to go against Deontay Brandon. Don't like to see that. So Ridgewood already with three fouls here in the third period alone. They trail by three, 19-16, 6 8 to go in the third frame. Nick Brown has it high above his head, dribbles to the free throw line. Bradford wide open underneath is Medley, and he puts it off the glass and in. That's Medley's first points. 21 to 16, back to a five-point game as the Generals trail. Patterson has it left side to Caden Bradford, bounces it once, and now he's going to be fouled by Nick Hart. So now maybe the officials have talked about cleaning it up a little bit. Maybe that was their halftime conversation. They may have, but it's only been one official calling all the fouls <laughs> thus far here in the second half. Patterson inbounds to Bradford, back to Patterson. He tries to put up a shot. I'm surprised it didn't call a travel because he went up with the ball and came back down. Yeah. And they just says he loses it out of bounds. Yeah. With I mean, a lot it's of contact. Be, it's got to be a travel. Yeah. Through all that contact, too. Five and a half to go, third period. Cadets with the ball. That's Owen Brown. 
Now to Nick Hart, into the lane, shot won't go. Rebounded by Deontay Brandon, and now he is going to be fouled by Braden Medley. So now the foul situation is starting to balance back out here. Yeah, certainly so, and uh, same official again. <laughs> he's he's going to single-handedly clean got up his, this game. You got his number. You're well, just keeping an eye right on Kuz it. does. You're lucky he's not here tonight. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> We want to send uh, best wishes to Mr. Corey's, the man we affectionately call Kuz. You know, those those guys, those people with just one name, those are real famous people. <laughs> the talent. Uh, yeah, that is, that is. You know you're famous when you just have a one name. Here's the Generals. They go underneath to Curtis Varian. He kicks it back out to Gabe Tingle. He tries to get it to Bradford and loses it. But now Tingle steals it right back to Bradford. Back to Tingle. Here's Keegan Millender in the far corner. And now he will circle back out front. And that ball goes right underneath the hands of Dalton Patterson. Ridgewood turnover. That is the 16th Ridgewood turnover. In the event of an accident, Brillhart's Body Shop will give you the quality, attention to detail, and satisfaction you deserve when getting your vehicle fixed. Give Brillhart's Body Shop a call, 740-622-0121, or stop by 622 Main Street in Coshocton. Molesky and Brandon back into the game for the Generals. They trail by 5, 21-16. Fort Fry with the basketball. And now we're going to have a foul away from the ball. And uh, was it? it was Brandon who was fouled, and they're going to whistle that one against Dylan Hart. That's an illegal screen. Turnover, Fort Fry. Warehouse Stegenstein proud to sponsor tonight's player of the game. One of our players will receive a gift certificate for a famous Warehouse cheeseburger and an order of their legendary onion rings, courtesy of Warehouse Stegenstein in Coshocton. Here's Gabe Tingle. Little layup. Made that one look easy. Puts it off the glass and in. 21-18, Generals trail by three. And now Nick Hart tries to do the same thing, and he is true. Makes it 23-18 as Hart will get the basket. So Tingle and Hart trading baskets. And now Tingle with it again to Curtis Varian. He lets loose of a three. It's an air ball rebounded by Fort Fry. Brown the other direction, all the way to the hoop, up and in. Owen Brown, his first points of the half. Molesky thinking about a three. He lets it fly. It's no good. Nick Hart with the board for the Cadets. Three-point shot by Owen Brown. It won't go. Offensive board by the Cadets. Fogel with it. Now back to Nick Hart. He is fouled. Put him at the line for two. Foul's going to go against Braden Molesky. So Nick Hart at the free throw line. His team leading by seven. And it will stay at seven as he misses the first of two. Casey Brooker back into the game. He replaces Dylan Hart. Nick Hart's free throw is up and good. So Hart one for two at the line. Back to the biggest lead of the game. Generals trailed by eight in the first period. And now it's eight once more here in the third frame. 26 to 18 as the Cadets lead. And now here is a touch foul. This one going to be whistled against Owen Brown. Yeah, Dalton Patterson driving the lane, took a little bit of body there, and same official cleaning it up. Well, they have made a conscious effort to call more fouls in this half than they did in the first. Inbounds pass to Patterson, and now he's going to be fouled. Foul's going to go against Owen Brown, so back-to-back -back fouls on him. Yep. This so game, we this – Go ahead. Oh, they're going to sub there. So this game is brought to you in part by Given Dawson Paisley Funeral Home, where they offer their services with compassion, care, dignity, and over 70 years of tradition. You can trust Given Dawson Paisley Funeral Home now and in the future. Generals trailing by 8, 26 to 18. We're already at 10 fouls. That's the same number of fouls we had in the entire first half, and we've still got three minutes to play here in the third period alone. Here's Tingle. Now he gets it to Patterson, to Molesky. He travels. 
Just kind of kind of hitched there, a shuffle of the feet. Picked that foot up before he dribbled. And now that'll turn it over. So the Generals will be shooting a one and one from here on out as there are six fouls against the Cadets. Generals with four. Quickly to the lane is Fogel, and uh, he misses the shot, and the ball, they say, went out of bounds. Last touch by the Generals, so Fort Fry will keep it. Fogel to do the inbounding. Looking, gets it in play to Medley. Now they circle back out top to Nick Hart, back to Fogel. Right in front of the Fort Fry bench. They penetrate. Now it comes back out to Huffman. Huffman dribbling to the free throw line to Hart. He stops, puts it down. Now back to Fogel. Here's a three-point shot. That is short as Huffman misfires. They try to go long to Tingle, and now that ball is lost. Give it back to Fort Fry. 2.17 to go in the third frame. Still an eight-point game, 26-18. Cadets with the basketball. Generals trailing. Deontay Brandon applying the pressure on the leading scorer, Nick Hart, for Fort Fry. And now there is going to be a foul as Brandon runs through a pick. Yeah, Deontay Brandon trying to, Nick Hart stepping out for a three-pointer. Deontay Brandon just trying to go through the defense as the shortest distance between two points is straight on through and gave him a forearm shiver and down the ground he went. That is going to be Brandon's third foul. Cadets to inbound the ball. They get it into Brooker. Now to Fogel. He will dribble it over on the far side. Dribbles baseline. Little driving kick. Brooker grabs it. Now they come back outside. Fogel has it. Varian applying the pressure. Back to Hart to the basket. And his shot is no good, but he is fouled. So I believe they whistled that one on Dalton Patterson. Is that a 1-4? Yep, so that'll be Patterson's third foul. Free throw by Nick Hart is up and good. Makes it 27 to 18. Biggest lead of the night at nine points for the Cadets. And now they've increased it to double digits at 10. 28-18, Fort Fry leading the Generals. Gabe Tingle with the basketball, now to Molesky, to Marcus Leindecker. He looks to penetrate, now Patterson takes it all the way to the hoop, up and in. So Patterson takes it back to an eight-point game, 28 to 20. And now here's Huffman with a drive and kick. Patterson gets it, throws it off of Brooker, and that will mean uh, Ridgewood keeps the basketball, or Ridgewood will take the basketball away. Yep, 10th turnover on Fort Fry. Ridgewood with the possession. And so Patterson will walk it ahead for the Generals. 1-12 to play here in the third period. Ridgewood trailing by eight. Leindecker now to Gabe Tingle to Patterson. He will penetrate into the lane. Shot is up and good. Dalton Patterson getting hot. He's got six here in the period. 28-22, here's a shot by Nick Hart, and it is up and in. 30-22, down to 44 seconds. Leindecker has it go between his widgets, and it is out of bounds. So a little miscommunication between Leindecker and Curtis Varian. Brandon coming back into the game. Also Garrett Lippett back into the contest for the Cadets. Nick Hart to Fogel. Now Owen Brown has it, gives it back to Nick Hart to Fogel. Curtis Varian applying the man-to-man -man pressure to Brooker. Looks like the cadets will be content to maybe take the last shot as time will expire in just 15 seconds here in the third period. Back to Fogel. Now it's down to seven. Fogel between the legs, Varian applying the defense. They give it back to Nick Hart for three, and it's up and no good. Leindecker with the board. 
I know the generals were looking for an over-the-back call, but that will bring us to the end. After three quarters of play, it is Fort Fry 30, Ridgewood 22. This is high school basketball on WTNS Coshocton. In the nation, we know how it feels when a company doesn't treat you like a priority. You feel small. Or worst of all, like you're just a voice in a crowd. At Nationwide, we put members first. Join the nation. Nationwide is on your side. To join the nation, call Scott Boyer in Coshocton today at 740-622-2131. Subject to underwriting guidelines, review and approval. Availability and details vary. Nationwide Mutual Insurance Company and Affiliates, Columbus, Ohio. People's Bank has been committed to local communities for almost 120 years, and we remain committed during these uncertain times. Whether you are a current client or new to People's Bank, we are here for you. This is true for both businesses and individuals. As a community bank, we know how important it is to support local businesses as they are the backbone to the local economy. If you have questions or need financial assistance, please don't hesitate to reach out to us at our branch at 200 Main Street in Coshocton. People's Bank, member FD. DIC, equal housing lender. We're back at Fort Fry High School. The cadets lead the generals by eight as we start our fourth quarter of play. Fort Fry outscoring the generals 13 to eight in the third period alone. Ridgewood will start with the basketball. Gabe Tingle has it. Flashes out front. Molesky in the lineup. Back to Tingle. They clear out. Tingle to the hoop. Has it swatted away. Got it back. And now he's still fighting off defenders. And finally, a whistle is called, and Fogel will be tagged with the foul. So that's going to put the generals out the line. We talked about that earlier, that Ridgewood going to shoot free throws on every foul with the exception of a, a player control foul. Yeah, Gabe Tingle's first time to the line tonight. Got to make the most of those points when the clock is stopped. Tingle misses the free throw. Rebounded by the Cadets. Here is Hart. He will give it to Huffman. His shot is up and good. Made that one look easy. That is Huffman's first points of the game. Back to a 10-point margin. 32-22 as Ridgewood trails. Brandon over to Varian. That ball goes off of Varian's hands and out of bounds. Another Ridgewood turnover. Warehouse Dakenstein, proud to sponsor tonight's player of the game. Tonight's player of the game will receive a gift certificate for a famous Warehouse cheeseburger and an order of their legendary onion rings, courtesy of Warehouse Dakenstein in Coshocton. Cadets with the ball, 7.05 to go in the contest. Ridgewood trailing by 10. Medley with it. He'll hand it off to Hoffman. Hoffman looking, goes to Brown. No, over on the right side to Lippitt. His shot is up and good. Biggest lead of the night for the Cadets at 12, 34 to 22. Tingle over to Varian. He lets go a three ball. It's no good. Rebounded by Medley, and he's going to be fouled from behind. This game is brought to you in part by RAM Five Point Auto Sales. Stop in and see the great selection of clean, newer vehicles at RAM Five Point Auto Sales, 1102 Chestnut Street in Coshocton, or give them a call at 740-623-2200. That is the seventh team foul against the Generals. So from here on out down the stretch, the Cadets will also be at the free throw line. Braden Medley sinks the first on the front end of the one and one. Thirty-five to twenty-two, and Medley is a little strong on his second attempt. Thirteen-point margin. Generals trying to come back. Here's a shot by Dalton Patterson. It's no good. Ball loose. Still down on the court. Bodies hit the deck, and Patterson comes up with it. He lost it momentarily, and Molesky finally hauls it in. Patterson back to Gabe Tingle. Tingle driving, looking, gives it to Patterson. Now he kicks it out. Molesky lets go a three. It's up and no good. Rebounded by the Cadets. So here's Fogel with it. Fogel out top between the circles. Gives it to Luke Huffman. 
Now over on the left side to Fogle. To Medley. So they've got pretty much five men around the perimeter. They're con uh, convinced to just eat up some clock. Now there was a pass underneath. Fogel was open momentarily. Ridgewood swipes it away. Long down court pass to Leindecker, and he puts it up and in. Great look there by Gabe Tingle to see Leindecker streaking down the court. So back to 11 now. 35-24, Generals trail. Here's Fogel, and now we have a, a timeout on the floor. So Henninger's going to talk about it. We'll see if they're going to call a, a 60 or a 30. Looks like a 60. All right, so we will go ahead and take a break as well. 5.21 to go here in the ball game. It's Fort Fry 35, Ridgewood 24. This is high school basketball on WTNS Coshocton. The 2021 Ford Bronco Sport is finally here at Village Motors in Millersburg. Hi, this is Deke Miller, and I would like to personally invite you in to test drive Ford's exciting addition to the small SUV segment. Also, the all-new 2021 Ford F-150 has arrived, too. How do you improve the best truck on the market? You do it with a power up and down tailgate that doubles as a workbench, available onboard generators, and an available hybrid powertrain. Check out the all-new Bronco Sport and 21 F-150 soon at Village Motors in Millersburg. I want to thank all of our sponsors for helping bring you high school basketball throughout this COVID-19 2020-2021 season. We've uh, been excited to bring you live streaming basketball on Facebook and YouTube. Thanks to Fred Williams and Andrew Wallace, part of our streaming crew. WTNS Sports Central is where Trevor Griffith is helping us out at tonight. Ball's going to be knocked out of bounds by the Generals after the Fort Fry timeout. Cadets will keep it. Ridgewood trailing by 11. It's 35-24. Wide open underneath is going to be Dylan Hart. Yeah, wide open, and Marcus Leindecker kind of came in, yeah. gave him a bear hug, didn't let him get yeah, that you shot got it. Yeah, you don't want to give him an easy one. I don't know how he got open that fast, or was that wide open. So the, the this, you know, we talked about how fast that first couple of periods went. This fourth quarter is going to be an eternity. Yeah, with all the free throws. Yep. First toss by Dylan Hart is up and good. That puts his name in the scoring column. Makes it 36-24. Cadets leading by a dozen. Hart, the backside of two, misfires. Gabe Tingle with the rebound for the Generals. Patterson has it inside the lane, off the glass and in. So Dalton Patterson brings it back to a 10-point margin, 36-26. Here's another wide open pass to Dylan Hart, and he just flips it up and in. Taya, got to have some defense there after that full court pressure. Now a foul with the other end, and that's going to put the Generals at the line. And yeah, Dalton Patterson driving and took a little bit of contact as he was going for the shot. We do have this final score for you. The winner of this game will now face Tusky Valley as they defeated Morgan 81 to 54. Well, that wasn't even close. No. Not at all. Tusky Valley, very solid team. We covered them against Ridgewood a few weeks ago. So the Raiders await the winner. Or, or Tusky Valley, the, the Trojans rather, over the Raiders. Dalton Patterson, good on his first attempt. Josiah Cahill had a yeah, take off his warm-up pants. First time in the ball game tonight. Yeah, and you got to be thinking that they've got him out there to foul if possible. Patterson's free throw good. Back to a tw uh, ten-point game, 38-28. Generals will be looking to play some stingy defense and maybe looking to foul down the stretch. A little, little early for that. And they got five men around the perimeter. Going to the basket is going to be Luke Huffman, and he is going to be fouled by Dalton Patterson. 
So that's going to be the ninth foul. So Huffman's going to be at the line for a one and one. Well, he was in the act of shooting, so he'll be there for two. Huffman eyes the hoop, and he's off the mark. Another final, Highland 57, Stralsburg 27. So Highland a big winner there. And another final also with the Malvern Shenandoah. Malvern 65, Shenandoah 36. Huffman's second free throw, also no good. So still some life for the Generals here. Dalton Patterson with a three ball. It drains it from way outside. Cuts it to seven. So we still have a ball game here. Timeout on the floor with 4.13 to play in the contest. It is Beverly Fort Fry 38, Ridgewood 31. Back in 30 seconds on WTNS Coshocton. If you're a business or do-it-yourselfer looking for the best possible siding for your home or office, then stop by MRV Siding Supply. They offer the number one rated panel on the market, Cedar Max Super Polymer Insulated Siding by Provia. Cedar Max provides outstanding performance inside and out with impact resistance, impervious to moisture, flame retardant, and noise reduction, giving you peace of mind. For Cedar Max Super Polymer Insulated Siding by Provia, call MRV Siding Supply at 800 524 7436. Visit them on the web at MRVSiding.com. The three-pointer by Dalton Patterson cuts into that lead. It's now a seven-point game, 4-10 to go in the contest. Generals trailing 38-31 to to Fort Fry, the number one seed. Still a lot of basketball to play. Cahill applying pressure. Now it's out front to Nick Hart. Deontay Brandon there, little double team. They, get it, they finally get it out of there. Here's a shot put up and in by Casey Booker. Casey Brooker drops it through. Or check that, that was actually Dylan Hart who had the basket. And Deontay Brandon fouled at the other end, so he'll go to the line to shoot one and one. Nine so. team fouls, the next one will be shooting two. So the Generals need to cash in with the clock stopped. Brandon, the left-handed free throw, up and in. Didn't have much arch on it, but I'll tell you, it's all the same if it drops through the hoop. Yep, they all count, especially now here in three minutes and 43 seconds left of the fourth quarter. 40 to 32. Brandon is true on his second attempt. So now back to a seven point game. Brandon applying the defense. Might have got away with a carry there. That's Nick Hart. They get it out. Into the lane goes Fogel, and now they're going to whistle Tingle for the foul. I tell you, Fogel has, uh, I'm not sure if he got injured in the first half, but he's got a bandage right above his eye. It was the first play of the third quarter when they took him out and put Lippitt yep. back in there, and I think it was him and Deontay Brandon out front kind of just took a little maybe fingernail to the outside of the eye. He, he took a shot and then came over to the bench right after that and just to have the trainer look at him to make sure he wasn't bleeding because if he's got blood showing, then he's got to come out. Hits the free throw, takes it back to an eight-point game. Fogel on the second attempt is also up and good. Here's the Generals. Gabe Tingle. Puts it up and in, and he is fouled. Nice move by Gabe Tingle. Just grabbed the ball, tucked it under one arm, took a couple steps, got to the basket, had some contact, and kind of just threw it up on the rim, and it bounced right in. So the and one for Gabe Tingle. So Tingle can make it a six-point game, can cut it to two possessions. If he can nail this free throw. Gabe shot a little strong. Rebounded by Fort Fry, and now they call a block against Keegan Millender as Nick Hart just plowed over Millender. Millender kind of holding his elbow. Yeah, Millender took a shot on that one. He was there for about 30 seconds before 
before he came in. Yeah. Looked like a pretty obvious charge, but yeah, apparently that, not. I don't know about that one. Hart makes the free throw. He makes it 43-35. And where, where we are seated, we are just right over top of where he was at. And he was not moving. No, no. Millinder was set. Very much Make set. no doubt about it. Yeah. He was set. I think you get a couple bonus points for being the smallest guy against a, you know, a much bigger player, but not on that one. Hart's free throw is good. Makes it 44-35. Substitution into the game. That's Medley back into the contest for Beverly Fort Fry. Nick Hart will come out. It's almost a surprise that they take him out of the game, but I don't think they want him to foul. Here's Varian with a three-point shot for the Generals. Up and good. So the Generals hanging around. Curtis Varian with the tray makes it 44 to 38. Warehouse Steakenstein proud to sponsor tonight's player of the game. Tonight's player of the game will receive a gift certificate for a famous warehouse cheeseburger and an order of their legendary onion rings, courtesy of the Warehouse Steakenstein there in Roscoe Village. Well, we've seen a good one tonight, Chris. You know, it, we got off to a little rough start with all the turnovers, but. You know, both teams have kind of got their mojo back here in the second half, putting up some points, fewer turnovers. And, you know, we finally seen uh, the Generals hit some threes. But Patterson stepping up with a big shot. Now Curtis Varian draining a long one. Absolutely. They do have Braden Molesky in there. He's about due for one. He's zero for five from beyond the arc. And uh, he's normally five for five from beyond the arc. So uh, the Generals are due to make a few shots here. And, you know, like you said, both teams firing on all cylinders. You know, Ridgewood down six, only six, with a little over three minutes to go here. Uh, the full court pressure is really starting to kick in. And, and like you said, turnovers down. Ridgewood with one turnover in the fourth quarter, Fort Fry with two. So uh, both teams taking care of the basketball a little bit better, but both teams engaging their full court press to see if that pressure uh, makes any difference here. We appreciate all the viewers and listeners both online tonight, whether you're listening on FM 99.3 or on our website, mywtnsradio.com. And we appreciate the 350-plus watching on YouTube here from Beverly Fort Fry High School. Cadets with the basketball. That's Fogel who has it. Now goes over on the right side to Nick Hart. He loses it, and now he's called for traveling. He was trying to call for a timeout, but he had slid across the floor well before he signaled for timeout. Yeah, and the official that made the travel call was the one who yep. missed the uh, the charge here on Keegan Millinder a minute ago, so maybe a little bit of a makeup there. So we're inside of three minutes to go in the contest, 252. Cadets leading the Generals 44 to 38. Patterson quickly down the court, off the glass and in. Now a four-point game, 44 to 40. And now they call a push against the Generals. Curtis Varian is hit with a foul. Yeah, I was writing the statistic down. I didn't get uh, to actually see the play, so I didn't see how much contact was there. But Curtis Varian not happy with himself on that one. Well, you could just tell by the look on his face he didn't think it was a foul. Yeah. But regardless, the Generals have to regroup. They're down by four, 44 to 40. Garrett Lippett is at the free throw line. Lippett, good on the first attempt. It's his first time to the free throw line tonight. Forty-five to forty. Lippett on his second attempt, good as well. Timeout on the floor. Thirty-second timeout. We'll go ahead and keep it right here. We'll have high school basketball coming up tomorrow night on our sister station up in Millersburg, WKLM, FM 95.3. We talked about the Highland boys victorious tonight. The Highland Lady Hawks will be in action down at Cambridge High School as they are taking on the girls' team from Fort Fry. So if we have any Fort Fry viewers watching on YouTube tonight, you can catch the Highland Fort Fry girls' game 
on the WKLM YouTube channel as well as WKLM's Facebook page. That's tomorrow at Cambridge. And that will be a 7 o'clock tip-off in the regional semifinals. West Holmes boys team, the Knights, will play in a district semi. That's tomorrow night. We'll have that game also on YouTube and the Facebook page for WKLM. So two games tomorrow night for uh, the Holmes County faithful on WKLM. Generals with the ball. Josiah Cahill over on the right now gives it to Gabe Tingle. He drives to the lane, and he's going to be fouled. So put Gabe at the line for two. Yeah, Gabe Tingle currently zero for three from the free throw line. So needs to look to change that a little bit here on this yeah, one. Yeah, Gabe's, Gabe's got to cash in here. We need points, big boy. 46 to 40. Eyes to hoop, and good. So it's Brandon, Leindecker, Tingle, Varian, and Cahill. The five on the floor for the Generals. Tingle's at the stripe. Free throw is up and strong. No good. Rebounded by Hart. So Nick Hart will bring it ahead. Double team there by Varian and Tingle. Now they go to Fogel underneath to a wide open. Owen Brown, he puts it up and in. 48-41. Gabe Tingle, right side of the arc. Now to Varian. He is blocked on his three-point attempt. Got his own rebound. Now gives it back to Tingle. He throws up an errant shot and is fouled. So Tingle's going to go to the line for three. Almost looked like one of those continuation plays that you see in the NBA. So that's going to be the fifth foul against Nick Hart. Now he is the leading scorer for this Fort Fry team. Emotionally, that's also got to be a little draining for the cadets with yeah, him checking out. I think so, and you can see it in his face, and the official even <laughs> came over and said, don't say anything. He could see it in his face too that he yeah. wanted to complain about the call. But uh, Yeah, because if you get run from this game, you're going to set out the next one. Yeah, not Either, worth it. Whether it's now or if you're doing it in baseball or track. Tingle makes the free throw, 48-42. Second one up and good as well. Third free throw by Tingle, up and in. So Gabe Tingle with three straight at the charity stripe makes it a four-point game, 48-44. to 44. Closing in on two minutes to go in the contest. Generals applying pressure. Fogle, and he's going to be fouled by Leindecker. And it's almost as if the Generals are just content to put him at the line and see what happens. Yeah, started out with that full-court press and didn't get the turnover off of it, so uh, better foul before more clock gets run off. So Nick Hart, who was fouled out, stands up and gives some instructions to Owen Brown. He'll kind of be the de facto leader of this team with Hart on the bench. Fogel at the free throw line. His free throw is no good. It was a perfect two of two from the line. Tingle, Molesky, Dalton Patterson back into the game. So uh, some fresh legs into the contest for the final two-minute stretch here for the Generals. Got to like their chances here with Hart being out. Ogle at the line, and it won't go. Patterson with the board. Generals come the other direction. They give it to Tingle. Down to 150 to play. Tingle to the hoop. Layup is good. Gabe Tingle makes it a two-point game, 48-46. The Generals fans behind us to their feet. See, if you're a Fort Fry fan, you might want to be thinking timeout. Fogle going right side. Varian and Tingle have him bottled up, and the up, there's the timeout. So a 30-second timeout on the floor. We'll go ahead and keep it right here. Warehouse Dagenstein, proud to sponsor tonight's player of the game. One of our recipients going to receive a gift certificate 
for a famous warehouse cheeseburger and an order of their legendary onion rings, courtesy of the warehouse steak and stein, Roscoe Village in Coshocton. Well, Chris, this was a 12-point game. Generals were down by a dozen. Was it even 13? I, I can't remember. I it was at least 12. I'm thinking maybe some, maybe somebody can chat with us if you want on, uh, on our uh, YouTube feed. But Generals down at least by a dozen. Now they've cut it back to two. But you got to like the way that they've continued to fight. Absolutely. Not giving up at all. Definitely something you have to be proud of. And, yeah, two-point game with a minute 27 seconds left. I think just about every fan in the gym is on their feet getting excited about this one. And uh, looking forward to seeing how the last minute and a half plays out. So two-point ball game, 48-46, 1.27 to go. Cadets with the ball. they got to get it in. Finally get it to Fogle. Millender applying the pressure. Kelton Fogel just content to dribble it. Now goes left side. They circle back out front. That's Garrett Lippett who has it. Now they go back over on the right to Medley. Now back to Fogel. Fogel dribbling. He's going to be bumped by Keegan Millender. And that's going to put Fogel at the free throw line. As the 6-1 senior will uh, toss up two here. Fogel two for four from the free throw line tonight. One oh five to go. Fogel with the left hand. Shot is good. Forty nine forty six. So Cahill, Varian, Patterson, Molesky, and Tingle, the five on the floor for the Generals. Second free throw is also good. Tingle kind of lets it roll, then finally picks it up. Heads to the basket, puts up a shot, and Tingle is called for the charge. So Braden Medley is set, draws the charge. The Generals will turn it over. And now Troy Dolick pleading his case to the official. A couple of Generals getting ready to come into the game. So now are they... Um, I, I'm trying to figure out what they're waiting on. They give I'm a, trying to get somebody in the game. You get 20 seconds, I believe he said, to Four figure nine. out who you want to come in for a, a player who's out with okay. fouls. And okay. All right. So Tango takes a seat. It's 50 to 46. Down to one minute to go in the game. Fogel has it. They get it across the timeline. They go down underneath to a streaking Garrett Lippett, and he puts it up and in. 52-46. Cadets lead. Generals give it to Patterson, and now he loses the ball, and now Ridgewood's going to have to foul. So timeout on the floor as the Cadets catch a break. They, they, they caught Ridgewood asleep on the press. They got an easy bucket, and back to a six-point ball game. 52-46, we will break as well. This is high school basketball on WTNS Coshocton. Do you need health care without the wait? Muskingum Valley Health Center's Urgent Care is now open to serve all residents in Coshocton and surrounding counties. From feeling under the weather to a sprained ankle, MVHC Urgent Care is here for all of your urgent health care needs. Simply walk in and be seen seven days a week at the new MVHC Urgent Care located at 235 Kenwood Drive in Coshocton, directly across from Jeff Drennan Ford. MVHC Urgent Care. Healthcare without the wait. Our score 52 46. Ridgewood trailing by six. 40 seconds to play. Fort Fry to have the basketball. Ridgewood full court pressure. They get the ball inbounds to Owen Brown. Ridgewood's got to foul. They almost come up with a, uh, a steal. Ball is last touched by the Cadets, and the Generals have done it. Forced to turnover. They're going to have the basketball. Two-possession game, Patterson and Molesky 
Back into the game for the Generals as Millinder and Deontay Brandon take a seat from the defensive side. Josiah Cahill will trigger it in. Gets it to Patterson, down to 35 seconds. Patterson all the way to the hoop, off the backboard and in. So timeout Generals, they cut it to a four-point game, 52 to 48. It's going to be a full timeout. We will take a break as well. This is High School Basketball on WTNS Coshocton. Hi, I'm Casey Newell from the Home Loan Savings Bank. As a community bank, we offer excellent mortgage rates with the personal service you need. We'll take the time to discuss all your options and get you a fast answer without having to call some out-of-state headquarters. Best of all, you'll be investing in your future and your community as well. We're an equal housing lender. It's the kind of pride that you feel inside. We've got the hometown spirit. Basket by Dalton Patterson makes it a four-point game. It is Fort Fry 52 and Ridgewood 48. 30 ticks of the clock remain. Generals need to force another turnover here. They were successful in that approach defensively on Fort Fry's last possession. Huffman to do the inbounding. Gets it in play to Owen Brown. He is quickly fouled. And now Brown will come to the free throw line. He will shoot two. Foul will go against Deontay Brandon. So for the Generals, you got to hope that Fort Fry misfires on their free throws and that the Generals can get a quick bucket here. And Deontay Brandon's fourth foul has to be a little careful in the last 28 seconds. Brown's free throw up and no good. He was a perfect two of two from the line tonight. So Brandon will step out. Patterson back into the game. So the Generals down by four. Brown for the backside of two free throws. It is no good. Rebounded by Curtis Varian. Quickly ahead. They get it to Braden Molesky for three, and it's up and no good. Rebounded by Marcus Leindecker to Curtis Varian a tray. It's off the mark. Cahill gets the board. Now it's over to Molesky to Patterson down to 10 seconds. They need a bucket. They get it to Leindecker. He puts it up and in, and he is fouled. So Marcus Leindecker breathing life into the Ridgewood Generals with the basket. They do count the bucket. Well, they haven't put it on the board yet. There they finally put it on the scoreboard. So 52 to 50. So Marcus Leindecker, there is, uh, to be exact, 9.8 seconds remaining in the ball game. Leindecker can make it a one-point game with this free throw. Eyes the hoop. It is up and no good. Generals almost got the rebound. It's still loose. Finally pulled down by Fort Fry, and Deontay Brandon will commit his fifth foul. I tell you, Josiah Cahill had a beat on it and was high in the air, just could not bring it in. He was up there on it, and then uh, I think it was Deontay Brandon also just timed yeah. his jump just a touch off. Otherwise, he almost had a fingertip on it and could have corralled it in, but that will be Deontay Brandon's fifth foul. So Brandon will exit the game. Curtis Varian will come back into the contest. Braden Molesky is uh, also wanting to come back in. The official, I tell you, he – He's trying to get people in and out. He's doing more coaching down there than Coach Dolik at the moment. Yeah. Tell Coach Dolik trying to have a conversation yeah. with Molesky before he gets in there and official not letting him wait any. So for Fort Fry, there's 5.4 seconds left. First free throw is on the way and good. 53-50 to 50 as Garrett Lippett drains the first of two. Generals need a miss here just to try to tie the game with a three. Lippitt's free throw is good. 54 to 50. Timeout Ridgewood with 5.4 seconds left. So 
So we'll go ahead and keep it right here, Chris. So the Generals have fought back, you know, and they Linebacker made that bucket, got fouled, put him at the line for one, and and you know you wanted to make that free throw, but when he missed it, well, we almost came up with that rebound. When I mean, we were that close to having the ball with down just being down by two, but yeah, it was it was all for naught. Yeah, Ridgewood very close with coming up with that rebound, and uh, Deontay Brandon almost putting it back in there, but uh, not the way the the ball fell. Yeah, I mean. It, these are the kind of games that you lose sleep over in the middle of the night. Thinking about this play, think about that play. Generals will have the ball. They trail by four. They need a quick bucket and they need to get the ball back. They get it to Dalton Patterson. He puts up a three, doesn't get it to go. Ball is down on the court, and this one will be in the books. So Ridgewood falls to Fort Fry by a score of 54 to 50. A 54 to 50. So the cadets will advance to the district championship game to take on number two seeded Tusky Valley. Again, Ridgewood falls to Fort Fry 54 to 50. This is high school basketball on WTNS Coshocton. I'm Casey Newell from the Home Loan Savings Bank. As a community bank, we offer excellent mortgage rates with the personal service you need. We'll take the time to discuss all your options and get you a fast answer without having to call some out-of-state headquarters. Best of all, you'll be investing in your future and your community as well. We're an equal housing lender. It's the kind of pride that you feel inside. We've got the hometown spirit. The Fisher Funeral Home in Warsaw is proud to sponsor this event as we support the families and individuals that have trusted us with their business through our four generations of service to the community. As the oldest family owned and operated funeral home in Coshocton County, we understand the importance of supporting our youth and fostering pride in our community. Please call us anytime at 740-824-3515 for any of your pre-need or at-need funeral counseling needs. You can also visit our website at fisherfuneralhome.com. The Fisher Funeral Home, serving others as we would like to be served since 1937. Stop in to Amici's Pizza before or after the game for the area's best in homemade pizza, salads, subs, wings, and more. Amici's Pizza uses handmade dough made fresh every day. For all the flavor but less calories, try their cauliflower crust pizza or other items like spaghetti and meatballs or chicken alfredo. Amici's Pizza delivers free to West Lafayette and surrounding areas. For big city taste at a small town price, it's Amici's Pizza, 740-545-1923. Hi, this is Jeff Drennan from the Jeff Drennan Dealerships, and it's time to talk about the power of three. What is the power of three? It's three dealerships, three times the selection, three times the service, and three times the people, and always the best deal. The Power of Three gives you nine all-American-made brands from GM, Chrysler, and Ford. Simply put, the Power of Three means you are covered. Look no further than the Jeff Drennan dealerships and the Power of Three for your next vehicle purchase. Visit us today at jeffdrennan.com. Life is full of uncertainties. What happens to your assets after you pass away shouldn't be one of them. At Raymond James Financial Services, we offer a transfer on death agreement that allows your estate to be held in a brokerage account, so it avoids the probate process and goes directly to your heirs. To find out how to make things easier for your loved ones, call financial advisor Shane Pyle at 622-3110, located in Coshocton. Raymond James Financial Services, member FINRA SIPIC. Life well planned. Let Domino's cook dinner for you. All day, every day, get a large three-topping pizza and now our handmade pan pizza. With High School Basketball on Facebook Live is a production of WTNS Radio and Claxon Communications. This district semifinal, it was Fort Fry 54 and the Ridgewood Generals 50. The Generals got off to a rough start as Fort Fry leaped out to a 13-5 lead at the end of the first period. Ridgewood was plagued by 10 turnovers in the first period. Generals got uh, got back and got back in order, but still outscored by uh, they, they got a little more points in the second half. 
or the second quarter rather, as they outscored Fort Fry 9 to 4 in the second period, and our halftime score was uh, 22 to 30 uh, at the end of three. You know, it's one of those situations where, where the Generals struggled. Uh, the halftime score was 17-14, a real low scoring affair in the first two periods of play. But things really started heating up in the fourth quarter as um, Ridgewood scored 28 points in the fourth quarter alone. So think about that, Chris. They had 28 points in the fourth period. They only scored 22 in the first three periods. They put it all together, but realistically, they just ran out of time in the contest. They outscored Fort Fry 28-24 to in that fourth period. But uh, Fort Fry, obviously, the, the victory, but they put four quarters of basketball together, and that was the difference. But you got to think back about that first period. Take away some of those turnovers and put some points on the board. You know, th this could have been completely different. Just couldn't overcome that rough start. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, playing on the road, tournament game, different atmosphere, and maybe a gym you haven't played in before. Just a lot of factors go into that. But, yeah, just started off too sluggish, and, and that's why they lost the game. But really got things firing there in the second quarter. Third quarter, pretty good, and fourth quarter, excellent. So just uh, – a little bit too little, too late for the Generals. Leading scorers in the contest tonight, uh, Dalton Patterson with 24 points for the Ridgewood Generals. Nick Hart had 16 to lead Fort Fry. Chris, run down some of those team numbers for us. Absolutely. You mentioned Fort Fry on top of Ridgewood, 54 to 50. Three-point land, Ridgewood 3 of 18 for 16%. Fort Fry, 2 of 12 for 16% as well. Two-point field goals, Ridgewood, 15 of 20 for 75%. Fort Fry, 15 of 26 for 57%. From the free throw line, Ridgewood, 11 of 19 for 57%. Fort Fry, 17 of 28 for 60%. In the rebounding department, Ridgewood out-rebounded Fort Fry 23-21. to And then turnovers, Ridgewood with 20, Fort Fry with 14. So again, our final score, it was Fort Fry defeating Ridgewood 54-50 to as the cadets will now meet up with the number two seeded Tusky Valley Trojans for the district championship and a right to represent the East District in the regionals. It's time now to announce our Warehouse Stakenstein player of the game as one of our players will receive a famous warehouse cheeseburger and an order of their legendary onion rings. And Chris, I'll let you go ahead and uh, go over our player of the game. Absolutely. We're going to give it to Dalton Patterson tonight. Played well on both sides of the ball there. Five rebounds, 24 points, and just an outstanding job tonight. So Dalton Patterson is our player of the game. He picks up that certificate from the Warehouse Steak and Stein for the famous Warehouse Cheeseburger and an order up there legendary onion. So the Generals falling tonight to the number one seeded Beverly Fort Fry 54 to 50. Chris, we saw a good ball game tonight. Absolutely a great ball game and um, you know it's definitely a tough one if you're a Ridgewood fan and just you know as I said a little too little too late. Had a little bit more time there. Generals starting to click a little bit better but uh, a tough one to knock them out of the tournament this year. The Generals will close out their 2000. 2021 season, but congratulations to the Generals for claiming a sectional title, and uh, we wish them the best in the offseason. Got to say special thanks to uh, my partner Chris Wallace here tonight. Great to work with you. I'm Casey Claxton. Also, thank you to our streaming crew, keeping us uh, live and up to date on YouTube with Fred Williams and Andrew Wallace, and of course, Trevor Griffin back at WTNS Sports Central. Again, our final score, it was Fort Fry 54, the Ridgewood Generals 50. Have a nice night, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this WTNS Sports Broadcast. Audio CDs of this broadcast are available by calling WTNS Radio. 740-622-1560. WTNS is shot in. We are the Sports Voice of East Central Ohio. High School Basketball on Facebook Live is a production of WTNS Radio and Claxon Communications.